Over on Jaguar Gatorade, a new college football video is out. In this video, we talk about a dumb business decision made by Wisconsin during the 1981 season. Click the card in the upper right corner to watch. And now, on with our feature presentation. On October 10th, 2022, the Carolina Panthers did something that was long overdue and did something that, in all honesty, they should have done last year. They fired head coach Matt Rule, ending yet another disastrous experiment of a college head coach going into the NFL. Because you can count on one hand the number of times in the 21st century that this has actually worked out. Now I'm not going to dive into the reasons why Rule was fired, because that's not the point of this video. But with Rule's canning, it meant that the Panthers had to find a new head coach, and find someone to fill the void for the final 12 games of the season, and at the very least, try and right the ship. With that, they hired this man right here, Steve Wilkes. He was the defensive passing game coordinator and the secondary coach for the team, so he got a promotion to the interim spot. But in a past life, he was a head coach. Back in 2018, Wilkes was guiding the Arizona Cardinals. And the stint was a disaster. The Cards went 3-13, finished with the worst record in football, and Wilkes was fired after just one year. You've gotta be a special kind of bad, especially when the GM and the owner are exactly the same, so there wasn't even a shift in the front office, to be fired after one year. But that's how bad Wilkes was. Still, who said second chances aren't a thing? And if you want an interim head coach, a guy who's been in that top leadership position before and knows what the responsibilities of the position are, is a good pick. This is a chance to prove himself. This is a chance to show that the last time, he wasn't ready, and that this time, he belongs. This is a second chance at a first impression. And how does Wilkes respond to this opportunity? He responds, in his very first game, by delivering some of the most cowardly coaching I've ever seen, in a move that made no sense whatsoever. Because even though he's an interim, and even though it's his first game in an almost impossible position, he is getting no mercy from me whatsoever. Because what happened at the end of the first half was nothing short of inexcusable. For those who aren't watching this in the immediate aftermath of the game, Here's a brief recap of how we got to this point. It's October 16th, 2022. It's week six of the NFL season, and we have an NFC matchup over at SoFi Stadium between the Carolina Panthers and the Los Angeles Rams. It's been a bad season for both of these teams, but especially for the Panthers, who sit at 1-4 and, and are coming off of back-to-back -back losses by double digits, including an awful 37-15 loss the week before to the San Francisco 49ers, where they never led it at any point. They look like the worst team in football. But as crazy as it sounds, with how bad the NFC South is, as the top team in the division entering this game has just three wins, for some reason, if you can pull this one off and go on the road and knock off the defending Super Bowl champion, as unrealistic and as stupid as it might sound, you're not entirely out of this thing one third of the way through the season. And the good news for the Panthers is that they've got the Rams on the ropes early on. I don't think anyone really expected the Panthers to win this one with how bad they've been all season, and with the team being 10-point underdogs. But after this play right here, where Dante Jackson had a pick six and intercepted Matthew Stafford for a touchdown, some shockwaves were being sent throughout the league, to say the least, as the Panthers led it 10-7. And when the Rams got the ball back following that drive, looking to get something going before the halftime break, and maybe even the score again, they're unable to do so. The Rams go three and out, following an incomplete pass by Stafford to his tight end, Tyler Higby, a short run by Malcolm Brown, and then another run by Brown that doesn't pick up the first down yardage thanks to a costly delay of game penalty. Now, you got the stop that you wanted. You have all of your timeouts, and the Rams have none. So if you take one here, you get it back with a minute left, and you have a chance to score some even more points especially since you're likely going to have some great field position due to where the Rams are punting this ball from. You're in a great spot to do some even more debt. Wait, 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 why is, why is the clock running? Uh, guys, you have all your timeouts. You can get the ball back and try to do something here, you know. What are you doing? Dixon punt. And Dixon 
line drive punt that'll wobble out of bounds. Not a great punt by Dixon. Okay. Well, uh, that was stupid. But hey, you've got the ball on the 35-yard line. You've got pretty good field position, all things considered. Your kicker, Eddie Pinero, has got a pretty strong leg. With all of your timeouts, you've got a shot with a player or two to get into field goal range and extend this lead of yours. Why you wasted 40 seconds when you didn't need to, I have no idea. But you can still make something happen only 20 yards away from a possible field goal attempt. And the play that you draw up... Wait, with a lead that? over the defending Super Bowl champs through one half. So P.J. Walker and the Panthers will go into the locker room up 3, 10-7. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something to look bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something to look awful almost immediately. These are moves where gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Carolina Panthers interim head coach Steve Wilkes. Yeah, he had quite the debut, didn't he? It was quite the eventful one as his Panthers laid yet another egg and lost it 24-10, getting outscored 17-0 in the second half. Between his quarterback, P.J. Walker, getting injured late in the game, and kicking wide receiver Robbie Anderson off of the sideline after he threw a temper tantrum, there was already a lot to talk about with Wilk's second coaching debut. But we've got to talk about this, because holy cow, this is some of the worst and most cowardly in-game management I've ever seen in my life. Because when you truly break it down, there was absolutely no reason whatsoever for the Panthers to do what they did with the clock. So with that being said, let's take a look at why not calling a timeout when you have all of them and a minute left and you're going to get the ball back is a horrible idea. And I can already hear you issuing a rebuttal to this. I can already hear you saying, wait a second, wait a second. You've got the lead at the half against the defending Super Bowl champions, and you're on the road. Why risk it? Especially with P.J. Walker at quarterback. Why put the game in his hands and risk the possibility of him doing something stupid? And to that I say, who said I said anything about putting the game in Walker's hands? Because last time I checked, you had this guy right here. Yeah, remember him? His name is Christian McCaffrey, and he's pretty good. Entering this game, the former AP First Team All-Pro was having a great season and was one of the lone bright spots on a dismal Carolina team. He was ninth in the NFL in yards from scrimmage, being a true dual threat in the running and the receiving game, and he was doing this while averaging 4.5 yards per carry. And not only was he a great player so far this season, as he had been for just about every season of his career with the Panthers, but he was torching the Rams defense all game long in that first half. What you're watching right now is a compilation of just some of the damage that McCaffrey did. In the first half, McCaffrey touched the ball 12 times, whether it was on a run or on a simple screen pass or a swing pass. In total, he had 95 yards. It was an incredible start to the game for him, as not only was he averaging roughly 8 yards per touch, but all 12 of his touches went for at least 3 yards, meaning that at no point was he getting stuffed. And on a third of those plays, he actually picked up double-digit yards. In other words, the Rams were having trouble stopping McCaffrey and preventing him from big chunk plays. Which raises the question, even if you don't want to throw a single pass and don't want to put the ball in P.J. Walker's hands, which I totally get, what was the risk, if any at all, of just calling one of your three timeouts with a minute left so that you get the ball back with plenty of time and two timeouts to get into field goal range and just letting McCaffrey do his thing. I can hear some of you saying that there's a chance that McCaffrey fumbles. To that I say, what kind of message does that send to your team about how much you trust them? What kind of horrible message does that send if you're worried about your best offensive player who's been playing great all day so far fumbling the ball. And that's especially true when you realize that the fear of McCaffrey fumbling, which is quite literally the only reason why you wouldn't try this, is completely unfounded. Since December of 2018, McCaffrey has touched the ball before this play 827 times. 
Want to know how many times McCaffrey's fumbled in that stretch? Two times. That's it. The man's fumbled twice in his last 827 touches dating back nearly four years. That is 0.24% of the time. That's not even 1 in 400 odds. That's how slim it is. For some perspective, the odds of McCaffrey fumbling the ball, based on the last four years' worth of data, are about the same, statistically speaking, as the odds of someone being born with 11 fingers or toes. Seriously. You decide to go into the half and not put the ball in the hands of your best player, even though it literally posed no risk whatsoever, because you are a complete coward. Because when you break it down, there seriously was no risk involved, since the Rams had no timeouts. Let's break down the best case and the worst case scenario, assuming that you want to play it as safe as possible, not let PJ Walker throw a pass, and you just want to give it to McCaffrey and see what he can do, because why not? If McCaffrey gets yardage, like he had been doing all game, and finds his way through the Rams' defense, you can get into field goal range, and you can give yourself an opportunity to score some more points, extend your lead, and build on your momentum going into the halftime break. And again, McCaffrey was averaging around 8 yards per touch, so this wasn't out of the realm of possibility by any means, especially considering where you were starting with the football. But let's say that McCaffrey doesn't get yardage, and he gets stuffed on first and second down. Guess what? The Rams have no timeouts. You don't have to give them the ball back. If you try to move the ball down the field, and you can't do it, you can always just take a knee, let the clock run out, and go into the halftime break right where you are. It is truly a no-risk situation. Compare that to the alternative of what the Panthers wound up doing, which was literally not even calling a timeout, letting the clock run all the way down, and then taking a knee, and it's like night and day. The first option, as in the non-cowardly option, gives you a chance to score while coming with no risk whatsoever. The second option, as in the option that Wilkes ran, lets your opponent off the hook and hurts you for no reason. You know what this is like? Imagine if in golf, you're playing with your friends and you've got a rule that says you're allowed to use one mulligan on a tee shot each round. You're allowed one bad tee shot where it's no harm, no foul if you put together an absolute stinker. It's the 18th hole, and you still haven't used your mulligan. You've been having tons of success with your driver all day, and fortunately for you, the final hole is a hole where if you get a good enough kick, it's a drivable par 4, with a completely wide open fairway, no hazards in either direction, and nothing blocking the green. Heck, sometimes when you play this hole, you've driven the green before. And you decide, for some inexplicable reason, with a mulligan in hand, and with a club that's been very good to you all day, to go with an 8-iron off the tee and play it safe. Why? You have literally nothing to lose. There is no risk or reward if you go driver. If the shot isn't good, then you just do it again. Much like with McCaffrey. If the look isn't good, you just go into the half and let the clock wind down. You know what Steve Wilkes just did? He just sent a message to his team that he has no faith in them whatsoever. He sent a message that he's a gutless coward. Because if he's not willing to trust Christian McCaffrey, a man who's been having a great game, a man who doesn't even know the meaning of the word fumble, and a man who could help extend your lead while at the same time giving you a 0% chance to give up your lead, then who is he willing to trust, especially on this roster, which is completely depleted of talent? The first impression that these players got of Steve Wilkes was that he has no faith whatsoever in them trying to make a play, even if history suggests otherwise, and even if there is literally no downside to trying it. It'd be different if the Rams had timeouts in their back pocket, where you risk the possibility of giving it back to them if it doesn't work out and you get stuffed. But that wasn't the case here. And I'll tell you this much, if Matt Rule did the exact same thing, we would be destroying him, and rightfully so. Steve Wilkes had a second chance to make a good first impression, and with this absolutely cowardly coaching, he blew it. Then again, it's the same guy that later in the game had 3rd and 19 down by 14 points with about 6 minutes left and decided to call a running play. So who knows what he's thinking. So what do we learn from all this? Trust your players especially if said player doesn't turn the ball over 
has been playing lights out all day, and especially if he's one of the best players in the entire league. If you've got all three of your timeouts, you've got a shot at great field position, and the other team has no timeouts left, then there is literally no harm whatsoever in trying to score and extend your lead. Playing it safe for no reason whatsoever is only going to come back to bite you at the end of the day. And if you have two options to do something, and option one has no risk and a pretty good reward, and option two has literally no reward whatsoever while having the same risk factor as the first, then there's no reason not to do the first option. Unless you're stupid and a coward. Because when all these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaguarGator9. To see college football videos, subscribe to JaguarGator8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.